Hey everybody, it's Carl here. I'm going to show you how I string the uh, nylon string. I've basically got this ready to go for the sixth string. So I'm just going to, like my friend said, just show them what you're going to do. Don't talk about it first. So I'm just going to show you and then I'll explain it. Go under the string towards yourself, but it's under. And then there's a little place right here that you can stick the string down again. So it looks like a knot, but it's actually just a loop. And then I pull all the XX slack. You really don't want extra windings on a nylon. Now I'm just going to use a string winder and bring it up to pitch. Helps to have another guitar around. So right here, when you're coming around and you see the string and go to the inside, I'll show that a little bit more in detail. Anyways, I can go. Okay, so the next string I'll show you a little bit more in detail about the bridge. This is the A string. Already had done the sixth string, obviously. You always want to when you unravel the string, you want to assess the string. This, these are uh, Savarez, and you can see right here the uh, string. There's kind of a solid part right here, and then there's this weird kind of, you can see the, uh, I guess it would be the silk or whatever. You don't want to use this silky end. You always want to use the strong, powerful end on the bridge, and that's this end. So I'm going to bring this up, try to pull this around so you can see. So I'm going to go in, uh, looks like my bridge fell off there. When I'm uh, doing this, I, I actually labeled my bridge, just says bass. And I, the B stands for bass, but it also stands for back. So I'll pop that in there, schedule that in. Okay, so I'm doing the A string right here now. So I'm going to assess the, how much length. You don't need much, maybe two and a half inches. And you you want to go away from you. Go. You have to feed. Get used to feeding the string to yourself. That's one, two. Actually, two is fine on this. I will go three on the treble strings. Okay, so now we're going to go back over to the the headstock. So I'm going to find the hole. I'm just going to go straight down and then bring it bring it forward, not in the back, up, up the forward, feed it back up to myself, and then I'm going to pull that length and go under it, feed it to myself, push that string down in, and there's a little loop right there that I push it down into again. I'm going to feed that excess length and take up the slack before I try to use the pegs. There I got it. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to just going to make sure I'm in the second string groove, the A string groove. And I'll go ahead and wind it with the winder and I'm going to find out okay, there it is. So I'm going to split that it actually was where I had come up from underneath. It's down over here now. So I'm going to go over there. And we'll check this other. I'll get that low E in tune too. Doesn't have to be in tune perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to go back do the D string. So you actually want to be predicting, okay, well, what are you going to see me do here? Okay, so here we go. So I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to go a little faster here. Not so much explanation. Okay, assess the string, pop it in, bring it over, feed it away from myself underneath, away under that little popper there, away, feed it to myself, Assess if you want to go two or three. That was two again. I'm happy with that though. Okay, then back to the headstock. Take it all the way up, push it down. That that I had lined up perfectly. So take it forward from the roller, up and around underneath, 
push that length down, get that slack out of there as much as you can. And then with the final thing, you're gonna take that forward again down. And then take the slack out, pu push it up to yourself, get that slack out so you've got wind against wind. You don't want as, you don't want wind against silk there. The silk is there, but you wanna get that out of there. And then wind it up, get it in the groove for the D string, obviously. You might have to go up and grab it. And then watch for the underside to come around and pinch it right in that little, there's a little crease there. And that goes over the small end of the string and, and locks it again. So they're already stretching. I don't need to be doing that with the peg winder, but... All right, G string. Same dealio. Here we go. This one I might go three full times. So once again, I'm back here. I've actually got my cell phone velcroed to the the lip of a music stand so I can push it around and it stays pretty well. Pretty cool. Tripods don't seem to work very well. Velcro and a music stand does. All right, so I'm going to go under here. I'm going to assess do I want to go? Yeah, I'm going to go a, I'm going to go one more. I just do not want any slippage going on here. I really don't like that one time through stuff. Somebody who says, oh, that's enough. They don't actually play guitar. I play guitar. And I do not want to be thinking, well, I wonder if it'll slip today. All right, there's a little, there was a little button on the end of that string. For some reason, Savarez does that. I don't know why, but just cut it off. If you can, you can send it through the hole again before you do the string wrap. Boy, that really is going to lock it down. That can be pretty... And that, it doesn't matter if I feed it under or over. And uh, then I'll find that extra place, feed it back down to myself. So that is going to be one strong locked string. And I will tighten that again with a pair of pliers. Don't get any of that slack out of there. A little too high. Well, not too bad, actually. All right, so I got that one. B string. Definitely going three times around on the bridge. Let's sneak that back over there. Just predict what's going to happen here. Strong end. Don't use that uh, painted ball end down here. That's not what that's for. You want the solid produced end. And don't try to put your ends like like this one's captured by that. That's the way they send them from the factory, but don't do that. Because if you break one string, you're not going to be able to get it out, and it's going to be a nightmare. Believe me. We'll take care of those in a second. All right, so I went under three times, poking that string under to myself. Boy, it's easy to get lost, but don't worry. Just work it. Po poking that, and I got nails so I can kind of poke that string end down in there. All right, back to the headstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that little, there's a little plastic ball there. Right there, don't want that. And this one, I definitely take it forward and I will send it through the, send it through there, send it through the little peg hole there. And bring it over. Now I'm just going to do my normal wrap underneath. Send it through the, the little remaining loop. Cinch it down if I can and start wrapping. I always want to assess that I'm... Yeah, but it's got another lock. Yeah, it just passed over itself again. Yep. Let's see here. Yeah, it's already stretched itself in there. That was just lucky. <laughs> All right, last strings, last but not least, I'll have this thing ready to go for the final, the final details, which we'll review in just a second here. So same thing. I'm just doing my same thing and ascend it under. May, may want to make sure you. Have All right, so I went around it. I'm going to go under once, twice. Really concentrate, not lose that end of that string. 
and then tighten it down. You, you can see a lot of those wraps. So that is a solid bridge connection. I'm a piano tuner too, so a lot of this stuff has to do with uh, stabilizing strings under tension. It's the same principle on a piano as it is on a guitar. So some of the pro some of the concepts I use came from uh, advanced piano tuning concepts, which is pretty cool. So uh, this one definitely is going to go through the peg hole once. I might go through twice. And it just so happens that it can go through twice. So, and it makes it a tiny bit harder to get it out when it when you're changing strings. But who cares? Just cut it out and get it get on to the next string. All right. So I did my regular wrap. I'm gonna do my lines. Gonna assess and watch. Watch what's going on here. Basically, I'm pretty ready to go here. Uh, one of the things that I like to do, this is a, well, everybody knows what this is. This is a clothespin. So with a half a clothespin, I'm basically going to burnish all the joining sections. So right here, I'm gonna go through this hole set of strings, kind of mushing those winds down, stabilizing everything. I'm doing it a little faster than maybe I would if I was really caring for this instrument. And then I would do the same thing up here at the headstock, going through, stabilizing the wind. These are old piano tuner tricks that you always want to stabilize your windings because you don't want to be called back, hey, my, my piano's out of tune again. I guess that's the reasoning. But it actually, to me, it's kind of a, well, not spiritual, but it's kind of a, uh, that you're healing these two things, the string and the guitar, and it's like, yeah, they're going to be hanging out and they are gonna be married together. So that way, I know what's going on. As far as cutting the ends off, I will cut these string ends from here, probably probably about a half inch, and I'm just gonna toss those away. I can actually see a little bit of tension that I'm gonna pull out right there. Do you see that on the A string? Just a little bit. All these things to get the strings to stabilize. Uh, where's my D string? Yeah, here it is. D string is actually up on the other side, doesn't matter. Uh, the G, same thing. I've, I've pushed and pulled these uh, strings up here pretty well already, so I didn't show you every single detail there. But I pushed and pulled on them with the clothespin. I used the pair of pliers a little bit to, to stabilize the actual uh, kind of the, loop, the loops when they cross over each other and stuff. You want to kind of pull on those and make sure they're stabilized. I want to make sure my guitar stays in tune as best it can. So it's probably out of tune again. I'm going to strum this guitar over here. Yeah, pretty bad. Any of those little things you do. still going to go out of tune, but that's basically my setup. 